Hello, uh, this is Andy Schweitzer, and I'm the continuation of a get towards the end of our just general introduction to chemistry. Um, we know that chemistry contains chemicals. Um, these chemicals have names. These chemicals have structures. Um, these chemicals have formulas, which tells us our ratio of atoms. Um, these uh, chemicals undergo chemical processes or chemical reactions, which they just rearrange into different arrangements. Um, so this video here today is an extension of the chemical reaction of that nature and say, so, well, how do we know if a chemical reaction has taken place? Um, just, you know, how do we know? Uh, well, in this case, a chemical reaction um, um, it, it's not always as easy to tell. Now we have two different types of, of processes that we're going to kind of look at here. Uh, one is a physical process and one's a chemical process. But ideally, you know, it, it is not perfect. Uh, and we often will use what we call an indicator of a chemical change. It means it's indicating uh, that we, you know, have some idea that this might be happening. But we're not sure. It's just, you know, without further investigation, we just really wouldn't know. Uh, so we're using indicators. Some, you know, some key ideas. Eh, it looks likely this is probably a chemical reaction. Um, now, for example, we could have a reaction X going to reaction Y, and if X is, let's say, a clear, uh, colorless. Apparently, I can't spell color. Let's just cross it out. Um, and Y happens to also be clear and colorless. Then there's a chance this reaction could take place and we not even know it, which is perfectly acceptable. But at this point, um, if a chemical reaction does take place and X changes into Y, there's a chance that our new substance has some different properties. Okay? Now, this is where we're key to this point, where we have, during a chemical reaction, we have a unique phenomenon that's taking place here, which is essentially we have a new substance being formed. Now, X has physical properties. and Y has physical properties. What's unique about a chemical reaction is that as we go from X to Y through this chemical process or arrangement, these two properties really don't have, aren't guaranteed or have to have any relationship. X could be very deadly. Go through a simple process to form Y and this substance could be essential for life. Okay, um, A very a simple example of this is, let's say, um, fluorine versus um, fluoride. Or even better yet, we could say chlorine, Cl2, to chloride. Uh, give it that two there, minus, and put two in there just so we don't lose an atom. Uh, chlorine is, is pretty much killed more people on Earth than any other thing. During World War II, it, is, it, uh, it just wiped out hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, very toxic chemical, as opposed to chloride, which we sprinkle on our French fries. Um, I very often make an analogy of a, a chemical like chlorine as being the, the cranky kid in Walmart that's screaming for a treat, and once you give them the treat, uh, they become quite friendly, um, all in one swift moment. That is chloride. Okay, so there's a slight difference, but one has very unique properties of being very deadly. The other one has properties of being essential to life. We need we need table salt. Uh, we're, our bodies are wired to crave chloride. Um, so the properties can, can change. Um, a new substance being formed is kind of a key idea for chemical reactions. So in this new substance, if X is going to Y, then if 
there's a few indicators but you know that could help us out here. Maybe Y has a new color. Okay. So again, just to state that how we might say in class is a color change. A color change could be an indication of it of a chemical reaction. Um it could be a situation where I is a gas, where we can now see all of a sudden a gas, you know, coming off of a, a substance or in it, bubbling through a liquid, and we call this um, gas evolution. Again, these are indicators of a change where something has happening where we're seeing a change, and that change is looking like some new substance is being formed. Um, another one we have is what's called precipitation. Again, this is not rain or sleet or snow of that nature. Precipitation is a new solid being formed. Usually it happens in solution where something would precipitate out, um, making, you know, also a solid falls out of a liquid. This is called precipitation. Um, and finally, very often with chemical reactions we have energy involved. Um, a reaction can give off energy. You know, this would be commonly referred to as exothermic. Okay, or not, not the same, but a different reaction might take in energy and we would call this endothermic. This is often accompanied with chemical reactions. So in this case we have down here we have energy, heat or cold, which is just absence of heat. So now again this is an indicator of a chemical reaction. In class we will see all sorts of uh, actual examples, which is always kind of interesting. But we could say something simple like um, uh, a chemical a chemical Let's just say um, a leaf right, turning yellow in the fall. Well, we don't really, we may not know everything that's going on inside a leaf, but we can say that we have a color change, and therefore it's indicating that we could possibly have chemical change occurring here. Uh, another example uh, sometimes throws people is uh, hair growing. Now, in this case, we take things like you know, like a, an apple, okay, maybe a you know a pizza, with some pepperonis on it, some cheese, and your little body takes and you eat these things in your mouth, and your body chooses to digest all that stuff and go through all sorts of processes, eventually producing some nice locks of hair. There is a big difference between you know, all sorts of difference between this food and your hair. They definitely are not the same thing. So this is definitely a chemical reaction. Not only one reaction, but maybe thousands, if not millions, of chemical reactions. Uh, so uh, just a couple of examples there. Now, a physical process, okay, a physical process is defined as either a, what I call a phase change, or what I would say physical manipulation. I'll take a few minutes and uh, discuss each of these here again. Um, we would probably do this in two days. This would be the second day uh, in class, but um, a phase change um, is simply where something goes from, and I'll put it sort of on the right side here. We, we call this a heating diagram or a heating curve. Or something goes from, let's say, a solid and then flips to a liquid and then flips, let's say, to a gas. Now, notice I drew a little longer line here because it takes energy to flip from a liquid to a gas solid to liquid and vice versa. So in this case we have some key terms we use to draw this. Solid to liquid is called melting. 
we have liquid to a gas conversion is called vaporization and we call solid directly to a gas um, sublimation now backward gas to a liquid is going to be condensation and then liquid to a solid we call solidify we avoid the term freezing try to avoid that one it has the connotation of being cold which it isn't necessarily um, and then the gas dropping to a solid is called um, vapor deposition and we will spend a little time in class talking about stuff but that's the that's the gist of it these are all physical manipulations if we have water uh, you know as a you know ice we get water as liquid, uh, which we put a little L next, uh, or we could have possibly water as a gas, vapor. Uh, all of these guys, the formula is still the same. It has a molecule of water here, we have a molecule of water here, and we have a, a molecule of water right here. All of them molecularly are the same it's more the spatial separation between these particles and also how fast the individual particles uh, happen to be moving that's the difference um, physical manipulation quite simple this is just like something you manually do to it you could uh, for example you cut something um, crush there's these terms that you often see a uh, rip you rip a piece of paper it's still paper um, you know bend so that sort of thing as well okay um, so a few things from this video that you might want to look at again is some you know physical and chemical properties okay now again we've talked about each of these terms already but just a quick highlight a physical property okay is a property relative to one item one item property. Okay, so you could say, for example, water has a density. Density that is an example of a physical property. It doesn't have anything to do with any other chemicals. It's just water. Water has a density of one. And then a chemical property would be how water interacts with other properties, other chemicals. For example sodium metal, Na is sodium metal plus water and you end up getting this massive, you know, very explosive chemical reaction um, which one of my favorites by the way, but uh, water, then we, could, we can drink water and it's great for us, it's essential for us to live so it reacts chemically different with our body than it does with sodium metal um, as opposed to a individual property is a property of just individual sodium Sodium is a metal. It has lots of individual metallic properties. So, physical properties, chemical properties. Um, how do we know that chemical reaction has occurred? That is the main idea there. Thank you.